Hello and welcome to another YouTube video dealing this time with homelessness. I'm John Lindsay of Friendly to Seniors and Bob Johnson is with us along with partner Carrie, who are real advocates for homeless in the city of Greater Sudbury. Now, as I mentioned, I'm with Friendly to Seniors and uh, also with Carpet Canning Association Retired Persons and Bob, we talked to you and Carrie before uh, about the homeless situation, which has not improved. But I just want to ask you a question just first before we get underway, because uh, we're representing uh, seniors groups. And I know that a lot of seniors have commented to me that in the past, it didn't seem that we, we really had uh, a homeless problem. And now, not only in Sudbury, but almost every city across North America and indeed the world probably has a homeless situation. What, why, why, do, why did this happen? Well, John, uh, one of the reasons why it actually happened was because uh, tomorrow's hope, last March of 2020, when uh, the COVID actually started and the mayor and council went running because you were uneducated, uh, never knew what to do and kept going with the problems, uh, it built up to this state. Uh, also, uh, what happened was we've been calling out the numbers, the overdoses, how much it was gonna rise, uh, the homelessness, uh, and, and, and just for your attention, the seniors now, uh, there's enough of the homeless out there mm -hmm. and they're actually seniors. That's right. But, but actually what's happening now is the homeless has also become uh, mental health clients, um, the addictions and so on. And it's getting worse. And now uh, people are panicking and so on um, because of all the deaths. So for example, this newspaper here yesterday, um, was very interesting, okay? And it said, uh, the city to look at a woman's shelter. Mm -hmm. To look at. The talk yeah. is so cheap around Tom Davies Square, I couldn't buy a bubble gum. Right. We're going to talk, we're going to talk, we're going to do the walk. The counselors come out, oh, this and all that. You know what? I've been hearing that for 15 years, John. It's all experience. It's all past. There's no walk to the talk. Mm -hmm. It's all just talk for the talk. And it's costing the taxpayers to a lot of money. Why? Well, yeah, well, we've noticed that uh, just today you drive by Memorial Park and the tents are covered with snow. You know, this is, it, it doesn't appear to be a very healthy situation, regardless of these people, whether or not they're having addiction problems or mental problems or physical problems or, you know, any sort of problem. It's obvious that it's a problem that's not being addressed. And we saw the, the mayor go with a request to, to the premier. And also we saw our two NDP representatives for Sudbury and Nickel Belt also ask the premier for help. But is this help a little too late? Should we have been doing something before this? John, a year and a half ago when I started this, after coming out of the Blue Door Soup Kitchen for just about 10 years, I know the homeless, I know their needs and wants and so on. Last fall, Tomorrow's Hope had 65% of them ready for housing. The city wasn't prepared again for that. Oh, they need ID. Oh, they need their applications. Oh, they need this. It's all talk. There's never action. You know what? For example, this woman's shelter, what they're talking about. Well, what about all the men? What about all the youth? And you know what? Nothing against the women. I hope they do it, but it's all talk. You know what? And then we got below here our great mayor stating that he looked out his office window and seen 200 white crosses. Overdose death, 200. What happened to the first one? Because the first one was too many already, okay? And then now what happened to the 50 or the 100 or the 150? It takes 200 people to pass away on overdoses before he actually looks out his office window and sees 200 crosses. John, if you're not going camping this weekend, this here is garbage, okay? There's nothing to it. It's all baloney. Well, you know, I, I watched the council meeting this past week when the whole issue of homelessness was discussed, went on and on for ages. And I ended up more confused at the end of that session than, than I was at the very beginning. And I know there were some suggestions that, well, we actually found a great spot that we could use, but, but the owner didn't want to rent it. They wanted to sell it to us. I don't know what that location was, but it seemed that there's always an excuse 
why we can't do something. I'm referring to we, which is, which is uh, the people that we elect uh, to represent us around the council table. So, and also the staff seems to be somewhat of uh, stalled or, 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 or hesitant or, 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 or not able to move on, on this particular issue. It, uh, it is rather frustrating, you know, as an observer to see that this has been going on for so long and yet we don't seem to have any solutions. Is it because we don't have the money? We don't have the staff. We don't have the capacity. We don't have the people. Uh, do we have to go to the province? Are they going to send in the army? Or, what, or what's the situation? Well, John, let me tell you. I'm glad you mentioned about the money, OK? For some people out there, maybe they don't realize that the greater city of Sudbury borrowed the $200 million, which is in limbo for Fantasy Island projects, OK? What's wrong with life? Everybody's life matters. Homelessness, addictions, actually addictions is a disease. It's like cancer or anything, it's not cured overnight. But if you're gonna stay uneducated, like our mayor and council, and you don't want to move forward, and you wanna just do the talk, we're gonna never go anywhere, okay? Carrie and myself, Taurus Hope, uh, did a presentation in November of 2020. What well, went nowhere when even the School of Medicine was prepared to back us, okay? Now what's happening is we have the tents up in, in, in Memorial Park, okay? Everybody knows I'm a double leg amputee. So what's gonna happen to these homeless people or addictions or mental health when they start getting frostbite, when they start losing limbs and so on, they're not gonna be able to cope with it. So what's gonna happen? Oh, we're gonna talk again? For 15 years, I, hate the, I heard the greater city of Sudbury stating, we're gonna do this, we're looking into it, we're gonna get this. Where has all the funding actually gone for the homeless in Sudbury? I don't see any improvement except everything getting 10 times worse. So I know, I, when, I, I can recall when we talked previously about this and then uh, you went into the hospital, of course, and as you mentioned, you're now moving around on legs that are not your own and, and Carrie, you did a great, job in, in helping Bob through that very traumatic time, but you were more or less out of circulation. And, and then when you came back, did you see any, any change whatsoever? Yeah, my predictions, the overdoses doubled. Right. The, uh, the overdoses doubled and uh, the homeless doubled. Right. Well, I'm going okay. to tell you exactly. We're going to get this alarm shut off. Sorry so, so that. that's a, so you you you're saying that that over this particular period of time, not only the time you were in the hospital, which was you know was, you know several months, you know, before you uh, were able to get out and all the physiotherapy and everything, but it seems like the numbers have grown. But the numbers seem sort of confusing. At that council meeting the other night, they said, okay, we had 169, and now it's 90, uh, and yet other people say we're closer to 300. And, uh, you know, th that this is what confuses me as just an ordinary citizen saying, well, what are the actual numbers? Do we really know how many we have who have uh, addiction problems or have some uh, incapacity or some, as they say, some barrier uh, to not being able to find, uh, you know, what you might call suitable uh, accommodations? Does anybody have a real, now we, we've hired an expert from Toronto, now this, I'm saying oh. we, the city. And also we have a local experts here in town and we have people like yourself. Uh, is there some sort of disconnect somewhere between all these different groups that are trying to help out and, and the experts, the real experts and the so-called experts? Do we really have any experts really? Okay. Well, John, I, uh, you know, I'm truth and facts and you know that. So I'm gonna call it the way it is. If those numbers are true or wherever those numbers came from, I will buy that person five pounds of bologna each because that's what it is, okay? 199 Larch Street, where the shelter is, where they say that they turn away next to nobody every night, maybe three. Can we add maybe 15 to 22 people every night, okay? Can we, can we be honest with the numbers? Can we just call it the way it is with the facts? No. We have to make ourselves look good. We have to state this. We have to state that. It's all baloney, Johnny. And, and, and it kills me because we were out in Memorial Park last week 
and we were handing out blankets and scarves and stuff. And those poor people, they're freezing to death. They are a lot minus 11. And we haven't even hit the minus 25 mark yet. And, and, and what are we going to do? So, for example, $200 million, what I said was in limbo or whatever. And this is just a simple solution, what I came up with is instead of the band-aid solutions, what about taking over a school where you got your gym, you got your kitchen, you got your, your classrooms where you can turn half into resident shelter rooms where they can sleep, a three-month program or a six-month program. Not only that, we bank their checks, their OW or whatever, so when they do get out, we can support them in a financial residential way of their own money but not only that we need to follow through with life skills for these people let them learn the basics they are very intelligent people because they can survive on the street and we can't mayor and council can't <laughs> that's very true right? is it not true but they can survive every day so if we start teaching them the life skills and building up their self-esteem and making them feel that they're important is just anybody else, because at the end of the day, we are all equal. But well, after you get yeah, well, you really, when you're looking at all of us, really, you know, you have the, the two really basic needs, and that's food and shelter. And how are we dealing with the, the actual food situation now? And we know that uh, we have in, encampments throughout the city, Memorial Park being probably the largest, and other people, various sections of the street and other areas. But uh, uh, how about the food? Are, are, are we satisfying the, the actual uh, nutritional needs at all? Um, out there, if you dig deep enough, yes. Uh, Dan Exelon and his team at the Sudbury Food Bank is fabulous. Um, they're doing the best they can for the soup kitchen, the mission, not in the, not in the part. Uh, tomorrow's hope and so on. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem is- the people that cannot go around. No, they're not being. No, the, yeah, exactly. They, it's, there's no uh, buddy out there actually delivering to them. So mm -hmm. what's going to happen is they're going to end up, and, and even this morning, the first thing that came to Carrie's mind when we drove down Medina Lane was, oh my God, there's not too much movement out here. How mm -hmm. many people are suffering in those tents right. of frostbite or anything? Um, in my past experience, I've seen the frostbite. I've seen foot amputation. I've seen death. Bodies found behind snowbanks in the past. This is the worst it's ever been. So, John, I'm going to interrupt. The only positive I could take out of all these tents downtown is the only way we could tell if they've passed away is probably because the snow hasn't been removed from the tent. Oh, my God. So something could be. I know that going back, this so was this stuff could, happening it, and nobody's knowing. Yeah. Well, this, this problem has grown, you know, enormously. I can recall when I worked for the Employment and Immigration, I ran the casual workers pool for a number of years. Now, the, the folks would come to the casual workers pool. Uh, many were homeless. Uh, others just looking for an odd job. Uh, but it seemed to me at that particular time, these individuals were pretty much looked after by the Salvation Army. Uh, they would be able to get uh, uh, food from various sources, the soup kitchens and that. And they were able to spend the day doing various things. And they went back to Sally Ann and, and spent the night. We did not have enormous numbers. We probably had between 30 and 50. And uh, But I know we also had problems. I know that uh, one of the individuals died uh, in, in a doorway. He was trying to keep warm. He set a little fire in the, in the doorway of one of the buildings downtown. And we had to attend uh, his funeral. And uh, you know, so you know, we've gone from this manageable number almost to something that's looking at, you know, almost several hundred or whatever the number it happens to be. So the problem, and I know Jocelyn Landry Altman sort of suggested, maybe we should put a cap on this. And- uh, We're far past that now. Yeah, I don't know, can you, you I don't know if you can put a cap. I mean, how, how do you put a cap because people move from yeah. one area to another? Uh, do, do we have any idea how many of individuals are, are, are not, so-called Sudbury natives or who are moved here from other areas to, you know, for whatever reason. So, so just before he goes on, um, we have actually three different colonies 
now of tents. Mm -hmm. So we got one in the back. There was one in the middle, but it seems like a lot of those have moved out. And then we have one towards the street. Um, but but, but I, 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 Carrie, when you say moved out, what does that mean? Do, the do tents they, are gone. But do they so, go? I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, do they leave town? Do they just go to another spot? Did you couch surfing, or do they find other accommodations, or what? What actually happens? Well, sorry to interrupt, but uh, they're living on the uh, on the pass between King Street and out towards uh, New Sudbury. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of tents in there, uh, up and down, and so on, and everything else. Um, and that's exactly what's going on. So my, my, my question is, if we got that school, like you suggested, or some other building, which is suitable, uh, how, how many would actually, did you, what percentage would actually use these accommodations as against those that say, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in, an, in that type of uh, facility. I want to be out on the street, as it were. So my answer on that, John, is um, because it's taken so long to actually solve this problem, the problem gets worse, right? Mm -hmm. So some of these individuals that could have been helped and dealt with a long time ago are now, they might not want to, but I'd say like he, I would say 40% um, um, would, 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 would take the help. Okay. But unfortunately the other, part um has come into their addiction too far mm -hmm. and now they're going to need that extra help so i'm just uh, as i say I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert but i'm just thinking taking on what bob had suggested there let's say there's a building available so you could have a certain section for those people who are suffering addiction another section perhaps those people with some mental problems and other people with you know, just, just because they're homeless, because they're homeless, whatever the situation is, economic or otherwise. And, uh, and if you had uh, workers there, uh, someone who is skilled with addiction, another person skilled with handling a certain mental problems, schizophrenia or uh, whatever it might happen to be. And then others there, maybe some employment counseling, because we do have a labor shortage of some extent. And uh, so that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, envisaging this all in one area where the, all, all this could be handled. And also with lockers available, where where individuals could could guarantee them that their possessions would be secure. Is that is that is, is this a pipe dream or? That's far from a pipe pipe dream. Okay, where does everybody learn? Everybody learns from the beginning. Okay, when I lost my legs, I had to learn how to walk again. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was a couple hurdles in the way, but I did it. And the homeless can do it. And as Terry says, the forty percent as of today, she's probably right. Bingo. But last fall, we had 65%. And that's the difference. So the longer we wait and play these band-aid solutions, the numbers are going to get higher and the harder it's going to be because the numbers will drop who want the help. Okay. For example, why do we have a task team? Let's take that money and the security. We have security guards. 24 7 seven days a week at 25 dollars an hour to park in memorial park half the time with no no narcan training no nothing they can't save lives they can't break up a fight they can't do nothing except sit in their car so what kind of money is that what the taxpayers are paying what what kind of money is the taxpayers paying for the task team could we not and i and i'll guarantee you we could probably house all these people um as a quick solution in motels until they build a foundation or get a foundation going. Mm -hmm. I know construction companies will buy schools for $5 or a dollar or whatever and turn them into pipe dreams, right? Well, why can't the city take over one of these places? And considering as of, uh, uh, I believe it was about a year and a half ago when the city took over uh, housing, why can't they get into the homeless right now and come up with a solid solution to move these people ahead. We don't need strangers going to talk to the homeless. Like when we opened the closing store last year and they put five security guards at the front door. What are we doing? <laughs> these are people. Right. Let's don't freaking scare them off right away because we'd be scared ourselves. Sure, yeah. 
it's a it's 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 a situation that you know sort of defies uh, explanation like the statement the other night on the on the council meeting when it was brought up that uh, we can't find workers you know some of the organizations that say they're willing to help they they just can't find staff anymore that that seems is it is it a problem of finding qualified staff or finding anybody as you mentioned some of the the guards and security people don't have any special training is no. Is uh, what what is the what is your take on that? Well, well, number number one, and then I'll let Carrie talk. But number one, when you're paying security, okay, anybody can get trained for an Arcan kits to save lives. Do you know what it's like when Carrie and myself go down to Memorial Park, and Carrie's going, "Oh my God, look, an overdose right there!" Blah blah blah, and the security guards are sitting in their cars. Part of those white crosses can be gone. Mm -hmm. it's so sad that nobody can get their stuff together and before I let uh, Carrie speak uh, there's one thing I would like to say uh, because not everybody down at Tom Davies Square um, you know is, is putting on the blinders and just doing the talk uh, Councillor Jerry Montpellier calls me twice a week and says you know Bob what's going on with the homeless and what do you think and this and that and everything else and, and he comes out when we do our dinners and so on because He's the one who's showing that he cares and stuff. Other than that, I have heard maybe from two other counselors from March the 1st of 2020 when all this started. And it's sad. Mm -hmm. And uh, until we can all sit down and, and work together instead of everybody trying all over the map to get anywhere and, and, and some of them to be uneducated, how about we get the education and do our homework and move forward in a positive way. These lives matter. These people are gonna either lose limbs or pass away, and it's so sad. And on that note, I'm gonna back up for a second and let Carrie speak on a couple other things, what's going on from last year about the washrooms and so on. Yeah, I know that's a very important consideration just before Carrie talks. So the idea of establishing the, the uh, I want for want of a better term, the, the the center where you look after the needles and the and those that need to take some sort of substance and this was going to be established on the other side of the tracks in a in a in a in a parking lot near what they call energy square uh is 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 that a is, is that a good spot is this a, is this a a good thing or a start or should that be revisited it seems like that's sort of removed from from some of the other services. Oh my God, that's gotta be revisited. You got council there again, who hasn't even been around in Sudbury for more than four years. And they're, they're trying to say, oh yeah, great location and so on and so on, okay? The proper location for that is at the Samaritan Center across the street mm -hmm. in the city property. Okay. Why? Because everything's there. Keep the one location. Why spread them across the city? Why have bodies going from Elgin Street all the way down onto Lawrence Street. Can we ever think, can we ever walk out to the people who work on the streets, saving these people and so on and saying, you know what, what do you guys suggest? Right. Not once has the mayor or Tom Davy Square actually say, you know what, guys, what's your opinion? What do you think? Well, and it's time to have Carrie uh, come on the screen here and just move over a little bit, Bob. So Carrie's close to the microphone. And uh, of course, you've been on this journey with Bob for quite some time now. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, really terrific care and help when he was in the hospital for the amputation. Uh, but, you know, can you give us your uh, perspective? Well, it's going to be a whole new new saying than the last time. Um, I was hoping that the last time that we all spoke that there was going to be some changes made. And obviously we see that it's worse and um, we have tent bill, but I call it. Um, I'm going to give you an example for today uh, for washrooms. Where do they go to the washroom? Mm -hmm. So the ones that are living in the tents, where do they use the amenities? Um, I tried to go to Tim Horton's 
today and I was told I can't use it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm told I can't use the washroom, where is everybody going? Like it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be. Well, I think I, I, I think we've heard from some downtown merchants about uh, situations uh, where those have used the unexisting facilities and have used door fronts instead. Well, what if you got to go? You got to go. Let's put it plain and simple, mm -hmm. right? You're here. So well, these are, so we talked about you know basic human needs being sheltered and food, but also there's other, you know, obviously use of washroom facilities is, you know, another pretty basic uh, need. But other than that, you know, the actual, you know, human interaction, the actual, you know, being able to have some sort of community. We almost saw that in a way at the mine mill, well, the old mine mill hall, uh, where there was a uh, some individuals were set up in there and they seem to be, they seem to be, you know, fairly content, fairly happy. And they seem to be actually developed a little community before they were shut down. Do you have any comments on that, Bob or Carrie? The only thing after what I just heard you say, the only thing I see as a community is the tent community. And I've never seen it that bad. Like that. Bad. and that's yeah. i know that's uh yeah. okay it's bad 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 but is it going to the province like the mayor has suggested and our mps have suggested is, is is that what what are they asking from the province are they asking for solutions or they're just asking for money which uh is is that going to help because you have to do something with that money johnny like i said before and i hope all the taxpayers are listening to this the mayor and council turned around and borrowed $200 million for Fantasy Island projects. Out of all of that money, what is just in savings or wherever you want to say it in many different ways, mm -hmm. would it hurt to turn around and buy a school with that money, a used school where the renovations would be minimum? And for example, maybe under 700, around 750, thousand to a million dollars this situation is over because once you open that school and there's the homeless and the addictions and the mental health on the street and so on those are the group that's going to stay there and not move mm -hmm. so why are we sitting on a bunch of taxpayers borrowed money when there's a cure and a suggestion right there but there, was, but there was a talk of, I think it's Lorraine Street, of building some uh, low cost housing through CMHC. But this would only be uh, probably available within uh, maybe a year and a half or, or two years. And, and, then, and, then, and then that's not sort of the type of housing that, uh, that you're suggesting. Is that correct? Oh, no. I mean, you can give them all friggin' free houses from the Donovan up to Moonglow to Mackey Avenue. It don't matter. They're going to need life skills. Okay, these are super people, our second families. And I'm positive from the people I talk to who always say, Carrie, Bob, you guys do a great job, and so on. I'm sure that the taxpayers would back this, know that these people are going to sleep in a warm, comfortable bed, and learning what has to be learned. Okay. I think you're right. And I know that, well, just going back to, I mentioned I work for employment immigration. One of the things we did was try to give people life skills and that's also upgrading so that they would be able to function in society and, 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 and be, of course, we were looking at employment. Uh, but also, you know, employment is just something basic for, for a lot of people. And, and the, the, the concern I, I think I'm just trying to get at here in the length of time we, we have available is not only you know, because we're talking, I'm talking on behalf of friendlies or, or uh, friendly to seniors and, and the CARP group. We have many, many seniors who are also, uh, I, I realize there are some in the, in the homeless situation, but there's others who are almost homeless, who are looking really for, uh, for suitable housing, especially for those on low income. And there's others on low income too. But just one final, when you consider, even if we had, say, you know, 300 or 400 or 500 individuals who are homeless, Considering our population of 160,000 people, this is not a huge percentage. And, and you would think that we could uh, devote resources to handle that small percentage 
So we don't have this problem that we have and including some of our seniors who are a little afraid to go downtown now because, because they're, they're, they're uncertain as, as, as to what they're going to face. So, you know, we could probably solve uh, multiple problems by dealing with this, uh, this one issue and the various segments of that, of that particular issue as well, as you suggested, Bob. Well, like I said, let's end with the talk is talk and let's do a little bit of a walk. Even though if we do a little bit and open the door and get these people in housing or in a motel room, anything, ASAP, let's do it. The money's there, the task force, the security, um, the $200 million borrowed by taxpayers where it's in limbo for Fantasy Island projects, like I stated again, let's spend some money and get these people and the solution solved. If they could do it in Timmins, they could do it in Sudbury. I saw the Timmins. They already opened up yeah. hotels for the homeless in Timmins. Yeah, that's right. I saw that on TV. On yeah. yeah. And Joy, so, you want another point? How about we get rid of some of the consultants? We have <laughs> management what we pay. Okay. And they come on and say, well, Windsor this and Denver in the United States does this. Right. Sudbury is Sudbury. Let's worry about Sudbury. Or can we not think that big out of the box? That's all. I'll let Carrie answer your next question. Because I get frustrated. Well, Carrie, I think that uh, we, you've uh, been with Bob for quite some time. You can appreciate his uh, frustration. Uh, but looking at it from your standpoint, and also as, uh, as a woman, we, we, uh, is the population broken down? It's, it would seem that the reports that have come out that we don't have as many women as we do men and, uh, and, and not that many children. So is a, is a primarily uh, a gender thing? No, I don't see that. There's a, a lot of children. And unfortunately, there's a lot of young children that are on the streets. And doing drugs and I hate to say it but the sexual industry um, between the families that are breaking up with the COVID mm -hmm. there's so, a lot going on but the women there's I don't say there's more men no. I think it's no, well so really, we're looking at a whole population that needs special attention and that it would appear now, just once again, from my own observation and listening to council meetings and other individuals talk and some of the counselors, it appears that uh, we're sort of running off in all directions with no real concrete action as to what to do, except as Bob, you've suggested, you've been involved in this longer than almost anyone. You've been on the ground. Yeah. That's the problem. So we've been trying for the longest time and nothing is uh, just from the results that we see downtown is I, I can't even give it a word now. Last uh, time it, I could give yeah. it a word, but now it's just it's more than ridiculous. It's but you can't you can't. I mean, some of these individuals must be really well meaning. But uh, there are. It, 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 it appears that there's a, you know, it almost needs a, someone, you know, that comes along and says, okay, we're going to get this all together. We're going to solve yeah. this problem and this is what we're going to do. But yeah. there seems to be no one stepping forward uh, well, in that regard. Well, what happens is that whole area, and it like now it's not just that area and it hasn't been just that area, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. They're being ignored as usual. And then that's how it's like when you ignore the ants, right? You have an ant hill, and what happens when you ignore them? You get more ant hills. So now what's happening is you get a couple tents. Now what's happening? You got a whole family of tents. Right. So what are you gonna do? Come around with a bunch of bug spray and spray them all off? That's what they're hoping, but you can't do that. Well, this is this is not going to go away as you suggest. No. Therefore, there has to be some action. Do you think, Bob, just before we wrap up here, so, you know, you've suggested that there should be some facility where the services are available. And I do agree with you. It's too bad that this facility cannot be located close to the Samaritan Center and some of the services downtown. But, uh, you know, is there something that we should be doing right now 
to help this problem. As the snow is out there, the temperatures are falling. We don't want people turned away from shelters. They say that, okay, we can accommodate 30, but when 32 show up, we got to tell the other two to go somewhere. Where, by the way? So is, is there anything that we can do right now for these people who are outside where if the shelter is not being provided, both short-term and long-term, is there something that you think can be done? Yes, uh, number one, you don't have to bring in a consultant from out of town for this, John. Why don't we rent some hotel rooms until we can actually end the talk and do the walk, okay? There's no reason for it. We're talking life. And like I said, $200 million sitting on the taxpayer's money borrowed in limbo. I'm sure everyone in Sudbury, you know what? The greater city of Sudbury, the community has the biggest heart and warmth for people, for each other that I've ever seen anywhere. And I'm positive that, you know what? They want these people out of Memorial Park and into rooms. And there's no reason why. We did it in the summertime because of COVID. And we're not going to do it for them in the winter. Hello. <laughs> so my problem too is I'm not going to name the hotel, but we have a hotel that's in Sudbury and only rents out the rooms to people from out of town, mm -hmm. but will not support our city. Um, I'm sure there's several hotels like that. So there's another concern and a problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know we, you know, we can uh, stash. Uh, I don't you know if that's the correct term, but we can put uh, some others. We are the the immigrants that come to town. We can manage the hotel accommodations, and yet yeah, these are our own uh, citizens. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but uh, these are our own citizens that we probably, and as I mentioned earlier on, we got 160,000 people. We got at the very most, the very most, 500 people who are in a real critical homeless situation. So as Bob, you suggested, maybe we should be using our, some of our resources to handle that problem so we can take care of these basic human needs, food and shelter. And as Carrie, as you mentioned, also washroom facilities. We got to treat them as human beings. So, so John, where we are right now is this is an emergency situation, crisis, life and death, amputation, Frostbite. I can go on and on and on with these words. It's just okay? going to cost the health care more money. If the mayor and council cannot pull their stuff together, they should be telling this community so the community and some organizations can get together and do something about it. And I'm going to tell you right now, you know what my dream is right now? If this cannot be resolved in the next month, I would really like our mayor, yourself, Terry, and myself to sit down and put out on the table solutions and questions and answers about the homelessness, about the addictions, about the mental health, or what is actually going down behind closed doors at Tom Davies Square. That's all I can say. But you well, know what? These, this is my second family, these people, and they mean a lot to me. And this community <laughs> means a lot to me. And I want a solution. Well, we're looking for that solution and uh, maybe this will start a, a dialogue. And I want to thank both you, Bob Johnson. Carrie, you know, what a terrific support you've been. And, uh, you know, other, you know, another pair of hands, eyes and legs. <laughs> I have to cough. <laughs> in the, in the uh, situation. I'm scared to cough now. I, it's not COVID. <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. I'm getting my third shot coming up in a very, Don't do very it. days. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, on behalf of uh, Tomorrow's Hope, uh, we would really like to thank yourself and uh, the seniors and so on, uh, the CART group. You guys are fantastic. We're so glad on what you do and uh, keep up the good work too. Well, I think that, you know, we all have a responsibility to make our community the best it can be, both for those who are from the millionaires down to those who have nothing. And matter of fact, we should be doing more for those who have nothing because <coughs> for the yeah, what's the expression? But for the sake of God, there go I. So, right. you know, it's, it's something that we have to do. And regardless of what religion you are, I think that all, all religions are all- well, being, At the end of the day, you can't take away your money. So you got to help them all. That's for sure. And, and, and uh, one request, uh, John, because this whole half hour has been about truth 
Fox Life and Death. I would really appreciate if you could send this out to all the media so they can have the honesty and facts of what's actually going on in the city when it comes to homelessness, addictions, and mental health. If you could do that for me, okay, tomorrow's yeah, we, hope would appreciate it. We certainly will. We went over our 30 minutes a little bit, uh, but they haven't stopped us yet. So uh, thank you very much again, and keep up the good work. Goodbye for now. Thank you, my thank friend. You.